Good morning and welcome everyone to Teams Tips. Today we begin our journey into Middle Earth as we discover one note to rule them all. I know there are many distractions that we are facing in our lives, but our goal is to make this session fun and engaging so you can focus this hour on learning and improving. And quite frankly, we could all use a little magic in our lives. Go ahead, grab your second breakfast as we begin our adventure. If this is your first time attending a Teams live event, know that we cannot see or hear you. You are able to interact with us using the live event Q&A feature. It's located in the top right corner of your screen. If you have not already, I've posted a comment in the chat and ask that you to like it by giving it a thumbs up so that we know that you're able to interact with us. Your comments are precious to us. And we want to hear your comments, your feedbacks, and interaction. So please utilize that chat feature to connect with us. We had nearly 160 registered to attend today and are thrilled to have you as allies as we take the first steps in our adventure. Let's start with the alliances we've already made with the two incredible student workers who are helping to prepare this production for you. These companions have worked to develop this event and through the fellowship of the team, have prepared today's session. Meg Delight will be behind the scenes, back at the Shire, producing the event and running our video feeds. And Soy has chosen to make this unexpected journey and share her knowledge and use of OneNote. Our fate is in their hands. So please join me in warmly welcoming both of them to their first live event. Our collective goal is to share this technology so that it becomes a hobbit for you. If we have not already met, I am Amanda Pritchard and hail from the Office of Information Technology. It is my pleasure to serve as the university's Microsoft 365 specialist. We regularly host trainings on all that the Microsoft suite has to offer and today we'll be sharing information on OneNote. When you registered for the event, we polled everyone and asked what their familiarity was with OneNote. The overwhelming majority stated that they knew enough about to open it, but generally didn't have a strong understanding of OneNote or what powers it held inside. So let me start at the beginning and share a little bit about OneNote and what it is. Just a moment and I'm gonna change sharing my screen. Okay. Fantastic. You should all be able to see um, OneNote that I have open on uh, the side screen here. OneNote is a digital notebook. It automatically saves and syncs your notes as you're working. The main purpose is to help users capture ideas and information in digital formats. You can type in your information, or you can insert it from other apps and web pages. Take handwritten notes, or you can draw your ideas. Share notebooks to collaborate with others. You think of Microsoft OneNote as a notebook composed of different sections. With each section, you can create an unlimited number of pages. You can also drag and drop files from your computer or mobile device into OneNote, save articles and photos directly from the internet, organizing them into your OneNote as you see fit. So hopefully this information is enough to pique your interest. So I wanna talk a little bit about how you can actually access OneNote. There's several different ways. So I'm gonna overview a few now, just so you're familiar with the options that you have for opening up this application. You should have um, the first option as being software on your computer, which you should be able to find by searching in your toolbar for OneNote. And you can see that it automatically pulls up. Now I've got mine pulled up already for you. So just so that you can see what it would look like if you're using the actual application on your desktop. You'll notice that it looks a little bit differently than what I first showed on the screen. So this is the version that's available to you on your desktop. Because 
we all use different computers, we all have different updates, and with everyone working remotely now, it's quite possible that your OneNote is a, is a more dated version or a different version. So for today's purposes, for our training, we will primarily be using the web version just to go ahead and disclaim that because it is the most up-to-date and it's constantly um, receiving updates. So you know that we'll all have the same uniform platform. So if you're using OneNote at home or on your personal desktop or a different laptop, it's quite possible that it will look a little bit differently than what we're showing you. And if you haven't uh, already, I wanted to also show you that, let me see here, switching a few things around. Let's see. You can also use it in Teams, So it wouldn't be Teams tips if we didn't make sure and go back to Teams. So if you don't already have OneNote pinned on uh, your Teams account, you can search for it by clicking the three dots on the far left side of your Teams platform and by searching for OneNote. Since I use it often, it's there. I went ahead and unpinned it because I want to show you the process for how to pin this so that you can have ready access to use it anytime. Because I'm sure after today, you'll find it as magically as we do. So if you go ahead, you can select OneNote. You'll see that it appears now on my left bar within Teams. And you can go ahead and right click on it in order to pin it. That's just in case you want it to appear constantly and always be accessible because you can share these notebooks just as if you were passing a notebook in class. You can share it with your other teammates and team members to ensure that they're having the same information as you. So that's one way that you can access your OneNote in Teams. The other way was by pulling it up on your computer from your desktop application. And then the way that we're primarily going to be demonstrating today to ensure that we have consistency among everyone is by showing it here. And you can access that by going to office.com. I'll go ahead and have some, um, Megdalite post that in the chat if it hasn't already, but we'll make sure and have that uh, link posted in case you're not familiar with how to already access it, okay? Well, let's see, I'm making sure. Oh, I did want to call your attention to one more thing that OneNote does operate differently than Word or other Microsoft products because it's meant to be more of the notebook functionality. So it truly can function like a notebook where you can pick up, drag and drop and maneuver the items that you have listed into different places. You can write over anything that you've already written and, and make different notations. So it is very dynamic, very movable, and you can adjust it to meet your needs. Okay, so I know that Soy is here and available, and I wanted her to come on today and to share a little bit about how we as a team have been utilizing OneNote for planning of this session and other Teams tips that are coming up. So without further ado, Soy. Hi everyone, my name is Soy and I'm a grad student at JSON. Um, as Amanda said, I'm going to briefly talk to you about how our Microsoft team is using OneNote and I'm also going to um, introduce you some great features that we can all benefit as a student and of course as faculty. Um, just to begin with, I personally got to know about OneNote myself when my friends actually introduced me that I should get myself a Microsoft Surface laptop. And trust me, it was just because of OneNote. That's how great this is. And as a student, we not only have to write down lecture notes, we also have to sometimes draw. And I had to draw some math equations as well. And let's now actually dive deeper into the functionalities that I just described. The first feature that I want to show you right now is share my screen one second please yes the first feature or the first menu i which is personal favorite of mine is the draw here 
I wanted to do some fancy drawing, but because I knew I couldn't, I actually copied and pasted it from Microsoft website. And this is one example of how you can use OneNote to draw your features or diagrams and everything that you need. And another thing I wish I had known before last semester is the math part. I personally struggled a lot writing down equations as my statistics professor was going over too fast and I didn't really want to waste papers printing out a bunch of equations and I really wish I had known this feature. All you have to do really is create an equation and please bear with me, I may be a little slow. It is because I'm using my computer mouse, but it should be much better if you have those fancy computer pens. So yes. For example, I put this equation. I don't know if that mathematically makes sense, but let me try that. And let's say you want to make it look fancier or more neat. All you have to do is square this equation by pressing that right there and click on math. And OneNote generates a nice equation for you. And if you're satisfied that the system read your equation correctly or your handwriting correctly, you just have to ink it to math and it is going to generate that fancy equation for you. And the great feature, let's say your professor starts talking about drawing graphs. You just go there and make it to graph. Of course, you can also insert this on page and you can also practice with playing some different numbers. And OneNote also has the options that are different for all types of equations that you put there. You are either able to um, find some quizzes that's generated by OneNote, and you are also able to follow their thorough step-by-step -step equations if you have any question of how the problem was solved. That is it for now, and now, Amanda is going to explain to you more about how OneNote is being used. Thank you, Soy. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. Excellent. Um, so one of the one of the main reasons that we enjoy and and like to use OneNote as a team is for the meeting options and the way that you can track um, meetings, meeting attendance, and use it kind of uh, as an agenda for yourself. So I guess we should start with some of the basics. These are called sections. They're just like the little divider tabs that you would have in your notebook. These are called pages. So you can start a main section and have multiple pages within that section to keep tabs on anything that you're working on. So I know Soy showed a little bit, but each one of these sections for us is the upcoming Teams Tips sessions. So we've got a record of all of our um, events here and ways to go ahead and plan and try to put together a spectacular event for you today. So what I was mentioning about the meetings and being able to keep a record of this, I know that if you're like me, you have a number of meetings every day and it's hard to keep up with what decisions were made, what the final um, conclusions were, or what you need to follow up on. One of the unique features, uh, because this is a Microsoft product, it does sync with all of the other suites, um, items in the Microsoft suite. So you can use this to store your meetings. For this in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to my desktop version of OneNote because I have found for sending out the meeting invitation and, or um, not sending out the invitation, but sending out the meeting details as a follow-up, it seems to work a little bit better when you use it through the desktop application rather than the web version. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and show you if you, this is, um, a listing of the different meetings, some of the different meetings that we've had in preparation. And I think this is a really cool feature because you're able to add in, if you go to home and you're going to meeting details, it's going to pull up 
um, all of the meetings that you have and you can just select one and it pulls it up based on the, the current day. However, you are able to select meeting details. It's gonna load for just another second. And you can choose from previous days. So if you're trying to keep up to date with what meetings you've had or meeting minutes from um, an academic session or um, student government or anything to that effect, where you're trying to track an agenda who attended and what was decided, then this is an easy way to make sure you have those all in one category uh, for yourself. So you saw that I was able to just go in there into meeting details, select whatever meeting it is that I'm wanting to track, and it automatically pops in. And you'll notice that it timestamps it with the date and time of the actual meeting, as well as who attended. So it's a very quick way that you can have a record without having to do something like a roll call or run an attendance roster. Okay, so if you're wanting to um, take notes, you're able to do that within your meeting. Oh, I can't stop. Yep, maybe that was elfish. Okay, so if you're wanting to take notes within your meeting, you're able to do so within the notes section. And then as a follow-up, you can send this meeting and description and all of your notes and details to those that participated in it. So in order to do that, you would go to File and to Share, and you're able to share it with individual people. So it comes up and it will appear to them like an email. So I'm gonna go ahead and share. See if Poulin's on here. Excellent. So I can go ahead and share it with Poulin and it will send him an email with the details of the meeting as well as any of my meeting notes. So it's a quick and easy way after you've had a meeting to gather up those details and send it out. You can also send it to um, all of the participants. So if you're wanting to share it with the meeting, you can share it with um, whoever participated in that meeting if you're needing to collaborate. So that's one of the greatest benefits um, that I can see within all of the Microsoft products is that you are able to collaborate with a large group of people so easily. So I'm glancing briefly and just to make sure my, um, I'm just checking here for any questions. Peggy, you, um, you wrote in who was invited. I'm not sure if you had a question or a clarification on that, but if you wanna give me a little more details, I'll try to help answer that. Um, but anyway, so you're able to share this with individuals and be able to track um, meeting attendance. So it's a nice, fun way to make sure that people are engaged. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you was our tags. So let me remember where this is. Kathleen Teams is our next event that's coming up. So we've already busily prepared um, for that. So let's see, Tackling Teams and under our marketing page. You can keep notes on anything. I know Soy showed uh, the ability even to do math equations, to do some basic drawings. You can embed photos, media, whatever it is that you're trying to uh, present to individuals, it's available here. So I'm going to give you a little glimpse into kind of our checklist for one of our upcoming sessions so that you can see um, what we've been doing and how you can tag information and make it into a checklist. Uh, I'm a big checklist person, so anytime I get to check a little box, it makes me very happy. Uh, so you can see we've divided this up into um, a calendar of things that we've been doing for our upcoming uh, Teams orientation on January 19th. So we've started our communications. We were able to go ahead and add in some to-do items. You can also, uh, within tagging in, in OneNote, you're able to identify if something is of critical need or critical use by uh, changing the different tags. So I'm going to show you real quickly from the home button. This is the tag functionality. I'll go ahead and open it up so you can see at a glance dropping down. These are the number of things that you can put in front of your text or in front of your agenda, whatever it is that you're needing to, to document. And it will present a little icon for you in front of um, the area that you select. Mine's uh, 
the web version, you can always tell when it's thinking by the little arrows that go round and round. Um, so it's thinking up there whenever it's loading. And whenever your document is saved, you can see that the checkbox is there. Um, but anytime you're wanting to add in a tag, you're able to select it from the box here and you can identify what it is that you're wanting to communicate with your team. Whether you have a wonderful idea of something to do, or if you have um, perhaps somebody that you know needs to make a call, you can also include their phone number there if you're trying to relay that information to your team. This is just kind of a quick way, consider it as putting a little stamp next to your to-do list of what you're wanting to accomplish. So it's a quick way to draw attention to important details on your, um, on your checklist or within your meeting minutes as well. There's a number of different tag um, options and ideas. So I do recommend going ahead and looking through. It's a really easy way to communicate and categorize to your team what actions need to be taken and in what priority. So if you are somebody that's managing or delegating tasks, you can quickly select a tag and ensure that your team has um, the information that they need. Okay, I'm checking. I don't see any questions so far. Okay, great. All right. If you have attended any trainings with me, then you know I have a love for Microsoft Forms. And because OneNote is a Microsoft product, you are able to embed other Microsoft products. So I'm going to go back to our OneNote and just show you here how we have been able to, let's see if it'll pull up where you can see it. Oh, it's not gonna load for me today. Um, I don't know why. Uh, probably just because this is a live event and things happen, right? So typically what should be appearing, which perhaps it's not because this is the form to register for today and I think it expired just before we got on. Um, so this is our form for registration today, but typically it will uh, show you and be able to have that form embedded in your OneNote. So if you are working with a large group or um, wanting to share information, get registrations, uh, have them submit feedback, they are able to do that uh, within OneNote. So you could send it out rather than sending them the link to the actual form, you could embed it within uh, OneNote in order for it to display to other individuals. Let's see here. So I am trying to think, do we have another? Oh, let's see if this registration will open. <sighs> well, I don't know what's going on with our forms today, but typically in every other time that we practice this, it pulls up the form embedded into um, the OneNote. So you're able to have access to that and make those edits. Maybe it's because I'm not logged in. That could be it. So I'm not logged into Forbes yet. So I'll check on that and try to get that um, working for us in just a moment. The other thing um, that I had on my uh, checklist here that I wanted to show you, and it's something that's near and dear to my heart that I know that we don't always um, remember to take into consideration, but are the accessibility features that are available within OneNote and within Microsoft products that you're able to um, utilize. Let's see here. So I'm going to pull open a different page here and pull open. So these accessibility features ensure that anybody with um, language differences, learning differences, um, visual or hearing differences are able to still access the information that we're providing. So if you've never used Immersive Reader, this may be a little bit of a treat for you today. It's uh, a slightly different way to be able to view the information that's on the page. So if you go into view into Immersive Reader, Immersive Reader is available on all of Microsoft products. It does save your preference, but it just makes it a more streamlined easy to read um, and easy to view feature. So you can see here it's pulled up the agenda. I'm going to go back and just toggle back and forth real quickly. But this is the agenda that we have written out and our golden star that we gave ourselves. So it pulls up all of that content for you. You can go into the text preferences and change the sizing depending on what your needs are visually. You can also 
modify the spacing between the letters to make it easier to read. There's uh, additional font choices that you can select what makes it easier for you to see, as well as uh, theme preferences so that if, um, if you have color blindness or just issues with the, the brightness or darkness of a screen, you can adjust it there to make it easier. The great thing about Immersive Reader is because you're signed into Microsoft and because we, we have accounts um, with Microsoft is that it saves your preferences. So once you as an individual have them set, it will save it for you. And that way, anytime you go into uh, Word or PowerPoint, you know, publisher, anything that you're trying to do, it's going to go ahead and have that available for you. In addition, it can show you um, the parts of speech that are available. So that's a kind of a, a fun little cheat, especially if you're learning a foreign language, that can be very helpful to you. Um, and it can even translate into a, a number of languages. Elfish is not on there. I did check, sorry but you can translate it into a number of different languages. So if you are um, English as a second language and you just want to assure that you're, you're reading the course instructions correctly or that you're finding the meeting details as you absolutely need them, you can have it go ahead and uh, translate that for you. Okay, so I just think that's a really fun feature. In addition, and I don't know if I have my sound on, so I, can you give me a thumbs up if if it's being heard, it's being heard. So in addition, it will read it to you so that you're able to hear um, if, if you are having difficulties seeing what's on the screen, it can read it to you. So this is a great feature um, for individuals to be able to see and to use that. Let's move ahead here. Um, also, if this is just a little bit cumbersome, I've seen a couple of questions and comments come in just about the, the viewing of all of the pages and sections and it takes up a lot of your space. If you need to just be able to focus on reading a particular section, you're able to go to the reading view and it's going to move those sections over a little bit for you. It does prevent you from making edits when you're in reading view because it is just intended for you to be scanning and reading that content. We'll go back into the edit and let's see here. Uh, another thing because you have so many people collaborating on a file and so many hands on a product at once that it's quite possible that you want to know who made what edits so that you can follow up in case there's a question or a concern. So in order to do that you can select any one of these options here, any page that you're trying to review. And if we right click it, you're able to show the versions on there. By showing the versions, it's going to give you an at a glance look as to who made edits and on what date. So you can see we've been busily preparing and making changes to our agenda to ensure that it flows as, as best as possible for you all. But this is a great way when you are working with a team, say you're working on a proposal or, or a large document, you're able to see exactly who made what changes and to be able to track those. Because this is a live feature, as soon as you make an edit into OneNote, it's going to sync that so that you can review that anywhere um, on any browser. So everyone in your team will automatically get your edits. There's not a delay or having to wait. Uh, for them to be able to see that. So let's see, I'm going to try to find a blank page. It's going to fight me here. Sorry, looking for it. Oh, the other place that you can find it, it was already right in front of me. The other place that you can find um, the different page versions is up on top under view, as well as the show authors. So you can um, check at a glance, let's go back up here, and it's going to pull it over to that far right side. So if you have a lot of other options over here or other notes, it's a little bit challenging to see that. So you're able to see the different authors and the different page versions of how many times somebody has worked on a page. The other feature that's um, 
very simple to use that can be incredibly beneficial for accessibility sake is the option to check accessibility. So I'm on a, a different page right now. I'm going ahead and clicking um, the check accessibility. Microsoft will do an automatic run for you and pull through um, all of the copy and all of the content on any of your pages that you select to ensure that it is accessibility friendly. So that if anybody did use, need to use the immersive reader or did need to read alternate text, that that appears and is available for them. So let's see here. And Soy, I think we're about at the point where we're ready to do um, some of our drawings. And I did want to mention to the audience today, I didn't, I, I neglected to do so at the opening, but we do have a couple of special treats uh, for y'all at the very end of today's session. We'll be doing some giveaways. And I think that, um, Soy, if you want to go ahead and take over your uh, sharing of the screen, so that we can uh, start with the drawing portion. I'll stop sharing here for just a second so that you can get that screen pulled up. But we wanted to take a moment and show with you too how um, you can make this OneNote engaging if you're in the middle of a class and you wanted to um, draw something out or share some details with an individual. So, Soy, did you want to go ahead and begin? Yes, so the first charades, my awesome drawing is for a medium price or medium sized price. So let's see who guesses this right. So audience, if you didn't hear and didn't understand that, we're, we're doing a, we can hear you. I just wanna make sure they understand. Um, Cause there's a chance to win a prize. This is a big deal. So if you're at home listening, get ready, have that live event Q and A box up. Start submitting your guesses as to what Soy is drawing. I'm looking in the notes to see if anybody has any <laughs> guesses. That is my final product. This is the best I can do. <laughs> okay, we have a guest for TMOC. And another guest for TMOC. Somebody guessed Crown, Crown. No. T mock, T mock, crown, a crown. Hold on, give him a second, give him a second. Somebody said king, king. Do you want to give us a little bit of some hints, maybe? Hmm. This is going to be my hint. Okay, y'all, hold on, let her get some details here. Oh. He's really on fire now. Are you sure it's not T-Mock? <laughs> Somebody said Burger King. <laughs> T-Mock, the one true king. No, so it, <laughs> it is T-Mock, guys. Woohoo! So, yes, you. So, the <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to go through. <laughs> We've got a lot of you. I love I'm reading all of your comments. I'm absolutely adoring it. King Timok. Oh, nice. So we're gonna go through and the first few that were able to submit that and guess correctly will <laughs> somebody said Trump. Oh dear. Um Gollum. Um okay, great. So that was our first charade. I think do we have time for one more soy just to show how engaging this can be within the classroom? Yes. This okay. is going to be a large price, a large size price. So okay, this is going to be a little difficult. Draw slow so that they can actually, I want to, yes. I want to make them work for it here. I'm going to make some details. So I'm going to make a thinner. And while she's drawing that, I'm just going to answer a couple of questions that came in um, about the pages and the sections. You are able to drag and drop all of those pages and sections. Um, so if you have one in one area and you want to move it, you are able to maneuver that and uh, change it up as, as you see fit. It is highly maneuverable. Oh, y'all, I hope I'm, go slow, go slow, Soy. We don't have any guesses yet. Go slow. Not yet. Okay. You gotta, you gotta give them a second to catch up. So give them just a second here. We're gonna let it sit. 
and <laughs> let's let it sit for just a second and fester and let's see what they get. The drawing is scaring me actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got, oh boy, we're getting, we're getting them now. We're getting, okay, we've got Dumbo, Gollum, Gollum, Yoda, uh, Gollum, Gollum, oh, Legolas, oh, my kinfolk, um, Elf, Goblin, my precious, <laughs> Meagle. Okay, somebody said it looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. I think it's the hair. <laughs> That's great. What do you or think? Should I just say the answer now? You should say the answer because we've got over 50 submissions right now. What? Okay, mm. it is Gollum. Thank you it's for guessing that Gollum. right. We also got a vote for Biden. Y'all are being a little bit too political now. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. I love it, you guys. Thank you for playing. So we will be in contact with you um, to to talk to you about how you can actually receive those prizes. And Soy, I'm going to take over uh, sharing my screen again because I wanted to show one more thing before I pass it back uh, to you. Um, just furthering on on our accessibility. So we will we will have another drawing um, and more giveaways at the end of our session, but I, I know we're we're wrapping up at the end here um, in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna show you just a few more things that I thought were absolutely fantastic that helped me today personally. So if you are one that um, is better at talking than you are at typing, maybe you do it a, a little bit more quickly. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and show you from the home screen, you can select on the far right, comma, the dictate button, period. And you're able to transcribe live dictation, comma, so that you can have all of your notes taken for you, period. You don't have to type a thing, period. Please let me know if you think this is a brilliant feature, period because I love it, exclamation point. So if you have never used that, the dictate button is just over on the far right under home, but it is a nice and easy way for you to be able to take notes, um, meeting minutes, to be able to transcribe anything that you're, you're trying to have a reminder of. But it's a, it's a quick and easy way um, to be able to designate this. You just have to say comma or period, but if you're used to voice to text, um, then you'll be a pro at this, I assure you. Okay. So wait, I'm gonna check our agenda because I believe I get to turn it back to you um, to talk a little bit about my favorite thing also is how do you personalize your OneNote? How do you make it feel like you? Tell me all about the colors because I like shiny things. Yes, thank you for that, Amanda. And I believe my screen is being shared. Yes. And before I dive deeper, I just wanted to show that this is how Microsoft Forms actually looks like on your OneNote. I think Amanda's screen was having some issue. I don't know why, but this is how it should look like. So, yes. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's better. Yes. Um, Amanda just talked about personalizing your notes and if you're a person like me or Amanda and you love to personalize your notes and organize better, you can always add different sections, of course, and also add pages. But I personally like to color code each section because it helps you organize your priorities and if you're a student, you can also have the color by classes. All you have to do is really click on your right button and choose your favorite color. And the second thing I wanted to share is if you go to a page and let's say you have a chapter and you have many sub chapters under that chapter, all you have to do is click on the right button and make it a sub page and it is going to shift to the right like this. Did you see that little change? Yes. And another thing, let's say you are working with your group members or team members and you wanted to show them that this page is no longer used, but at the same time, you don't really want to delete it, but just have it, I guess, a void page. 
you can go to view and change the color of the entire page and just have a red just to show your group members that it is a void page. Yes, and this is a great way to organize your notes because you don't have to exchange millions of emails between team members or group members. All you have to do is really give them sign that the color codes are there and different sub pages are there. So this is an easy way to organize and also collaborate at the same time. Give me one second and yes. And now that you have the coolest features that Amanda talked about, I want to talk about the last few features that we wanted to share with you today, which is my, I guess, personal favorite is inserting a video. And it's taking a little while. And yes, that is a random video that I played around to test for this event. All you have to Unfortunately, it wasn't Lord of the Rings themed. We missed the mark on that, Zoe. Yes, yes we did. But <laughs> yes, I actually had to watch it like three times last night to practice my speech, but it was good. <laughs> um, anyway, so all you have to do really is copy the URL of a video from a legitimate website such as YouTube. And once you paste it on your OneNote, this system, this OneNote system is going to automatically convert that URL into an actual title of the video, as you can see here and also create a thumbnail for you. The best part of this is you don't have to open another browser to play the video. It saves your Wi-Fi speed and everything. All you have to do is really play it. I believe this is a great feature, especially for this season today. During the pandemic, many people rely on um, lecture slides or video recordings and for educational purpose and also for entertainment purpose. And this is a very simple way to really share that knowledge with many people. The next thing I want to share with you is inserting an audio. All you have to do is really go to, oh, it's because I am still in the drawing mode. All you have to do is go to insert and you can see that there is an audio. It is supposed to work. Give me one, okay, audio. Once you click on that, I am being recorded right now and it is generating a record, a final voice. This is a great feature if you're a person like me and love to go back to your professor's lecture videos because many times professors mention important points that are not necessarily displayed on their lecture slides. So you can always go back to this audio recording of your professor or classes. And if you also work in a big team, you can basically record everyone's meeting and you can listen to it later to create meeting minutes on your own. And now I'm going to stop because it is being recorded. And the final product is going to show, I'm just going to briefly show you how the final icon is supposed to look like and that is it. You can play it later, you can pause it later and you can do that. So that is it. I believe I wanted to share with you Please give me one second. I have and, my cheat sheet right here. It's, and so I was going to ask you to, if you don't mind showing them just how you move um, the pages, like if you wanted to move um, the video page up a little bit closer, like if you could just maneuver a few around so that people can yes. see that, because we've gotten that question a lot. I see. Okay. Thank you. So that is a great question. All you have to do is, for example, let's say you want to put this video example under, under this introductory video. You just press it and drag it up there and you are able to maneuver your pages. Very easy and simple and it is a quick way to organize your sub pages. Did I answer your question? Yes, that's perfect. I just wanted people to see that you're not stuck on one way, that you can maneuver anything and change this. So it's not just, and I know that we're demonstrating today um, primarily the web version, but if you have it at home, you're still going to be able to uh, use a lot of these features. So, Soy, were you, were you finished? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I didn't want to cut you off. I just have one last feature that I wanted to share with everyone. So yes. all you need for this feature is really this tab button, tab. 
on the left side of your keyboard. If you're a person like me who loves to use tables or spreadsheets just to organize your budgets or even organize your own thoughts, all you have to do is type something there and press tab and it is going to create a cell for you. And you can do that for your classes. And if you want to make it into row, you can just press enter and you are not able to type more. Something like that. And I personally really like this feature because I love to organize everything into a table to make things more smooth and neat. And this is a quick way to create a table. And before I hand everything back to Amanda, I just wanted to mention very quickly that there is this magnificent glass, just like any other MS products. You can go there and search for anything that you want to see, because sometimes, as you can see, our planning notebook has a bunch of information and sub pages, and you have no idea which team member actually posted which information. So this is a very useful feature that you can also use to maneuver your notes. And that is it. And now I am giving- I had, I had yeah, one no more question, Soy. Um, Katrina loves the audio recordings. And we had quite a few people comment on how amazing that is to be able to do that, um, especially if you're trying to share that with students. Do you happen to know, because I, I do not, so if you don't know, it's okay. When you have made that audio recording, are you able to open it up and edit that within OneNote, or would you need to use something else or re-record? I don't think you... It's okay. Yes. I'm I don't know either. I'm not too so sure, but to my best knowledge, all you can do is really um, either play it or pause it or replay it. But Perfect. let's see. Yes. Oh, and now that you asked that question, the best thing about OneNote is really you can save anything. I see that, for example, in Word document or Excel, you're not able to really save the image or video or any recording. You will have to open OneNote, copy and paste that onto OneNote, and then you can save it so that it saves as an actual file. I don't know if that makes sense. So that is also a great feature of OneNote too. So with this audio recording, you can easily save it off OneNote and then edit it later. Hope that helped. Yes, fantastic. That's absolutely wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen to show a couple of things that I know also came up that we had a few questions about. <laughs> Megdalite, are you able to send me live as well? Aren't these students amazing, y'all? I've been so impressed with their knowledge and their willingness to, to share all of this information today. So I hope you um, are as well. I think the students are at UT Dallas are the, are the best and the brightest that can be around. Um, I, we had a couple of questions and comments about the, just the different versions. Are some of these features also available on the desktop version? So I just really quickly pulled up my desktop version so you can see you can draw, you're able to, it's, oh, there it goes, you're able to insert pictures. So there's a little sneak peek of some of the giveaways that we have for you today. Um, uh, but you are able to do a lot of these features. The main difference is, is uh, really the, the visual layout of what it looks like, um, but you are able to uh, still do the majority of the things, if not exactly the same, very similar. The desktop version has a lot more colors. So if you're into drawing or, or using a lot more color features and a little bit more different sizing for, for drawing and that sort of thing, but you are able to do the majority of the same things um, within this version. And you can see here is the recording audio and some of the features, the, the pictures of things that we have demonstrated today. Okay. Well, with that, I'm looking Oh, I've got a couple other comments that say students are the experts, and I completely agree. I have been so impressed. So I'm going to go ahead, and I know we're running short on time, but I feel like there's a couple of things that we still want to cover um, just coming up. So we realize we covered a lot of content in today's session, and it's quite likely that you have additional questions or may come up forgetting or needing additional assistance with some of the content that we provided today. 
So to better assist you and to allow for more interaction, we're going to be offering multiple office hours during the last uh, week of January. And so I'm going to go ahead and show that to you in, in just a moment. But before I do, I want to make mention of um, some of our additional e events that we have coming up. You've heard me mention it, and I know you saw it in our OneNote that we've got tackling teams or the teams orientation on January 19th. We already have about 350 uh, individuals registered for that event. It's going to be covering anything new that has released in Teams since the break, as well as just the basic um, features and functionality. So I know that all of us kind of got thrown into the world of, of Teams, and it might be something that you would like additional assistance with, or just want a refresher to ensure that you're using it to its maximum capabilities and that it's providing the best benefits for you. So that session is on January 19th. We're also hosting a power up on power up your PowerPoint, showing things like PowerPoint Live, the um, different checkers and features. Um, they have uh, different um, automated ways to make slides in there. So it takes away all of the design. It has a built in designer for you um, and then the final one I want to draw your attention to is just the master meetings. For anybody that struggled with to knowing how to accurately and adequately host a meeting, ensure people are muted or have the right permissions, uh, we're going to be going over that. So we'll go ahead and post a link, the link that's posted here um, in the chat uh, for you as well. Okay. So the office hours that I gave you a little bit of uh, information are, are just uh, um, are listed here. They're going to be the last week of January, and we're still, uh, I'm sending you the link now. We're still finalizing, setting those up, but you're able to book an appointment with us and come meet in a small group a session with a Microsoft specialist and be able to review any questions that you have, or even if it's just you just want to come and listen and hear what other questions people may have, that's your opportunity just to come and learn. And we're going to cap that at around 30 to 35 individuals. So we're offering them at two time periods, identical um, office hours, so you can just pick one. But if you would like to participate, know that, and we'll email this down as well, but know that that's available uh, for you to, to kind of, uh, go over anything that you may not have been clear about today. I had several people ask if there's going to be a recording of their session uh, today. There will be, and if you're wanting to catch up on any of our previous sessions, please note all have been recorded and they're all available on YouTube. We've been doing this since I believe uh, May or June of last year and have a number of um, videos and training sessions that are available to you. So from using breakout rooms to creating a bookings calendar to best practices within a Teams Live event, such as this event. So feel free to take a look and see if any of that material is of interest to you. So I know I promised you that we'd be offering um, another giveaway. So we're going to go ahead and do that now because you've all been so patient and such good stewards. So let me make sure, I have to make sure I did my sound for this. So let me reshare my screen real quickly because it's even better with sound. Okay, so if you registered for today's event, your name has been put into the spinner and we'll go ahead and click and see um, who's gonna be able to get a little bit of a prize. Okay, Ike Uduma, congratulations on your prize. I'm so excited for you. So we'll go ahead and close out of that and we'll, I think we've got time for just a few more. I know there's people that have to leave, but we'll, we've got three minutes. So we've got a few more prizes to give away. Awesome. Harshpreet, congratulations. So you are our second winner. Congratulations, I'll go ahead and close out of that and we'll do one more real quick before we finalize our session today. <laughs> My screen seems to be showing a little bit slowly here. Ha, Micah Armstrong won. Micah, I hope you're watching. Um, we'll make sure that you all get your prizes sent your way. I had a little bit of a delay there on um, our video feed. 
Okay, so finally, we work very hard to produce these sessions for you, and we want it to be something that's beneficial to you. I need to ask one thing of you. If you're still here, if you'll please go ahead, grab your phone, um, pick it up. You're able to go ahead and open up your camera and hover over this QR code. It's going to open up in a website for you. So the QR code is the black square that you see on your screen. We will also post a link in the chat now. So if you um, don't have your phone handy or aren't familiar with QR codes, you're able to pull it up in the chat as well. This QR code or the link will prompt you uh, to complete a survey. I believe it's only four or five questions. It's very short, but it's gonna help us assess how we've done and ensure that we can continue to improve to meet your needs. If you please take just a few moments to be able to answer the questions we have so that we can better prepare our future sessions. Okay, the hour is later than you think. It's time for us to conclude our session. And we have one final video, video clip to send you on your way as you're working on completing that survey. But before I show that, I want to express my gratitude for you all attending and to remind you that the Office of Information Technology is here to help. Should you ever need assistance, do not hesitate to reach out using either our online chat feature that's on our website, or you can email us at assist at utdallas.edu. Adventures never truly have an end. Someone always has to carry on the story. Thank you for being a part of our story today and joining us on today's adventure. You are awesome.